Welcome to Learning Analytics Tools course. In this lecture, we will talk about data collection in a different learning environments. You might have seen in this course, we are offering uh, in a learner centric MOOCs model. So, what is learner centric MOOCs model? So, the video lectures which you are watching now, it is called Learning Dialogues. That is the only place where we interact with you so that you can understand the concept and uh, each learning dialogue will have a reflection spot. So, we will pass the video in between, ask you to think about it uh, so that uh, you can think about the answers and write down in your paper so that uh, then we discuss the generic answers uh, the, the users can come up with. So, when we ask you to pass the video, please pass the video, think about it that will help you to learn better. And uh, there are learn by doing uh, activities that is will give a, a, uh, some uh, problem or some uh, questions which you have to solve by applying the knowledge you learned in learning dialogues. These are however usually not graded uh, for your assignment or something, but we highly recommend you to do that because uh, it will help you to understand and apply the knowledge you learned in a uh, different environment or different data set. The most important thing is um, we learn uh, not only by uh, attending lectures, instead we learn by interacting with your peers, uh, with our friends in the class. To make that same uh, environment possible, we want you to interact with the, your peers in the forum. To help you, to hide you, to start discussion in the forum, we will have focused questions so that please uh, respond to others comments and answer the your peers questions, uh, like them, comment them, also you answer the questions. So, we recommend you to go and use uh, discussion forums highly so that you will interact and learn from the other learners. That is called LXI, it is called learner extension uh, interaction. Also we have learning extension trajectories. This is very important part. For example, uh, we are in the 21st century, here uh, we do not need to be like a teachers uh, they did in 20th century teachers. For example, in 20th century teachers, uh, the teacher has the uh, source of knowledge, teacher has the access to some books in the library, so that teacher has all the knowledge. The students who sit in the class uh, learn only from the teachers, whatever teacher says is true, they cannot go and verify because they do not have access to all the knowledge or book or anything. However, uh, in 21st century, um, the students have more access to uh, knowledge, uh, more uh, access to more materials compared to teachers uh, or usually uh, teachers also have a similar access. But uh, so, they can go and check internet, they can watch videos, they can do lot of things. So, there is no need for teacher to teach everything in the course. And in fact, teacher no need to teach, teacher has to just guide the students, motivate them to learn particular topic, they just have to motivate them so that the students can go and watch videos from other lectures. Also there are very, uh, very good lectures, very good videos in YouTube uh, or in a MOOC which explain the same concept in a very beautiful way uh, which uh, students appreciate and students understand. Which means uh, why we are doing this course, there are a lot of course in data analytics. This course learning analytics is to think you about how to collect data in the uh, learning environments and use the tools for the data you collected in learning environment. So, the other courses exist in the online may not talk about how to collect data or the domain is not education. So, in order to apply data analytics in education domain, we are teaching this course. So, we, so I said that uh, there are a lot of other videos which means we will give the basic motivation and uh, the videos which need to understand what is learning analytics. However, for the advanced users or for the novice users to understand more on the topic, we recommend you to go and watch other videos that is called LXT. We will provide the resources links to those videos and also we will have a assessment question based on that which is not going to be graded. But I recommend uh, the interested users to go and watch the other LXTs, understand the concept better and uh, learn more about the topic we discuss in this lecture. So, this is about LCMs, so learner centric MOOCs. So, this course will be offered in LCM mode. So, when you see LXI, LXT or LBD, please participate actively, uh, not just only watch videos and go for exam, that will not help you to learn the video. Uh, that will not help you to learn the course better. So, let us start with the activity. 
In last week we assume that um, you had access to data from a classroom environment that is performance and attendance and also we use that data to describe the types of learning analytics. Let us consider you are the researcher or you are the teacher you might be already. So, you are going to collect data from the classroom environment. What data you will you collect and how do you collect? Think about it, pass this video, write down your answers and the resume to continue. Please consider what data and how you collect data. Suppose if you want to collect um, students uh, marks in the mid sem, you will collect by conducting an exam. Similarly, list down all the data which you can collect in the classroom environment and write down how do you collect it. So, you might have answered performance because that is the most uh, useful data or most data you want to predict or most uh, meaningful data to understand the students knowledge that is what you consider right. So, let us see performance is the most common data everybody thinks about it. How do you collect the performance? So, we can collect performance in the students mid sem uh, exam or mid term exam where we have questions and responses to each questions. If you can classify the question uh, to a particular topic that is you are mapping question number 1 to a concept 1, question number 3 for a concept 2, you can have more richer data and understand which concept the student understood. Similarly, you will have a semester exam that is NSEM exam course or the course in a subtopics. For example, you break down your whole course or whole chapter into multiple subtopics and you can conduct test on each subtopic uh, to understand students knowledge. Based on that, you can um, consider redoing or reteaching something like that. Or also, uh, you might have given the projects to the students. From the projects, the performance can be collected. Or you might ask them to present some uh, video or present some topic in the class and you might create a rubrics to assess the students communication skill, whether they did a proper literature review, they did some research skill, they are able to identify the gap in the literature. You can score on these uh, dimensions and you can use this as a performance data. Uh, you can give open book assessment like uh, ask them to use books to solve a complex problem and you can assess their knowledge and how to apply the learned in the class in a timed manner or you can conduct a quiz, a surprise quiz or something like that. These all ways you can collect performance data, but that is not only uh, data we can collect from classrooms. We can collect the students attendance, that is simple you can collect the students attendance by marking their attendance. And you might uh, have the students profile information and background information such as uh, students which year they are in, uh, which department or are they from uh, which kind of school or the family background all this information you might collect it from the admin department or whatever data you can collect, you can collect those data from the students. Also students might have a corresponding lab activity that data also can be uh, useful to predict the students performance. So, you can collect data from the students lab activities. Also, you can collect students engagement in the class uh, by observing the students engagement uh, by coding it in a sheet or manually coding it. Uh, if you want to use some uh, web camera and record the students engagement in the class and post class you can code them manually or use some software to code it. Also, it is like the students activities in the Moodle or another online environments like LMS or library systems. Uh, this you can collect from the log data of the system. Uh, from the log data you can see um, what are the activities, how many times frequently they log into Moodle, uh, how many times they download or access the particular course material something like that. Um, you can also collect students motivation and affect uh, using human observation, observation that is affect in the sense um, learner centric emotions such as boredom, confusion, frustration uh, by using the human observers in the class uh, which you can do in a real class or uh, in a live environment or you can record the students facial expressions using web camera and you can uh, sit down and uh, code them after the class. Uh, the camera will be tricky because if you are large classrooms you may not able to capture all the students facial expressions. So, it is better to use uh, human observation in a live classroom. Also, there are co-curricular activities, uh, not of extracurricular, but it is a co-curricular activities which my students might be participating in some events related to the course, uh, they might be taking extra course in uh, MOOCs or something like that. You can use those data also um, to uh, understand the students learning process, also to improve your teaching processes. So, we said that we can collect lot of data. The question is why we have to collect this data from classroom. 
So, it is good that uh, we have access to a lot of data, we can create a nice database of all this information of all the students in the class, but why we have to do? So, the main purpose is that in a first week of this course, we talked about um, descriptive analytics, diagnostics and predictive analytics. So, you have to understand why we have to collect this data and how this data can be used to predict something so that you can improve your teaching learning process. So, so do you want to predict the students performance in the final exam using the behaviors in the class, the behaviors which we discussed in the last slide? Or uh, do you want to predict uh, which student will do better in the mid sem exam or do you want to predict which student will um, do well in the quizzes or you want to understand which student is struggling in the class on which topic so that you can teach him better or teach her better. So, those kind of uh, research goal is upon you. So, you have to set your research questions then you collect data in order to find that. So, let us move on to the other type of learning environment. MOOCs. So, MOOC is massive open online courses, um, but uh, this Swayam or NPTEL which we are, uh, we are learning the course is actually a MOOC right. So, here students can access the course content from anywhere. So, MOOC is Swayam or NPTEL kind of platform. So, now you know what is MOOC right. So, consider um, you are a course administrator in MOOC or you have access to the um, MOOC software and uh, you know how to collect data, you have a team of people to collect data whatever you want. If you are a MOOC administrator, course administrator, what data you want to collect from MOOC from the students participating in your course? That is what kind of data you want to collect from the students interaction with the MOOC in your course. So, please pass this video, write down the answers. Also write down um, how do you collect this data, not just what data, like how do you collect this data from the log, uh, log file of the MOOC and uh, after writing it down, resume the video to continue. The basic and very important data in a learning environment, uh, be it a classroom or MOOC or any other type you have to understand the important data is timestamp. In the classroom, it is not possible to record timestamp in a very accurate level, so, but at least the date, time, the class section is good. But in an online environment like a MOOC or tele, we should uh, record the timestamp of each action or each uh, activity student do in the MOOC. Other than that, you also collect uh, students uh, learner ID, session ID, IP address. Uh, learner ID is uh, each student will have a unique ID um, and session ID is that uh, in the same MOOC a student might be logging it multiple times because the course has for 8 weeks or 12 weeks. So, student has to log in multiple times in every week so that we have to know the session ID. And also IP address is useful to know uh, the uh, location where the student is accessing the data that might be useful to do some uh, adaptiveness or uh, provide some feedback to the students. Let us consider you want to understand the students uh, page view uh, behavior, like what are the pages the students viewed in this course. Uh, for suppose uh, you have a MOOC uh, which has lot of content in the PDF and also we have a lot of videos and you have a discussion forum. What are the PDF? Uh, content the student is reading or which pages or which menus he is spending more time in it. So, you need to understand what are the pages viewed. So, how much time you spend on each page will be obtained from the timestamp data you collected. Suppose you collected a data saying that the student viewed the page 1 from time 10 am to 10 2 am, then you know that student spent uh, 2 minutes on page 1, something like that. So, we need a timestamp data and what page they viewed in order to generate that data. In discussion forum, very useful data is there, like for example, uh, is a student commented, is he deleted a comment, replied to some comment, or he supported the comment, or he, he created a comment, uh, is he started a, he started a thread, uh, delete, unfollow, reply, update, lot of activities within the thread. Also in forum search, the student is following some user or replying to same user multiple times. So, this kind of information can be obtained from the forum data, also the navigation information. For example, a student is uh, navigating from one page to other page most frequently or uh, the student will be watching most time the videos immediately going to answer the assignment questions or after assignment questions is going back to watch a video in particular space which, which, which uh, minutes he is watching. So, is he watching uh, videos to answer the questions, all this information is possible to capture in the MOOC that is called navigation. 
also in a video uh, behavior like are they playing when they are passing the video are they seeking the video from one particular place to other place in the in the video or they changing the speed uh, watching the video in uh, 1.5x uh, watching the video in 0.75x or uh, they are looking at the transcript or not those kind of information also can be captured from the behaviors in video watching. So, all this information uh, can be captured in MOOC. So, simply the idea is that please collect all the learners interaction with the system that is called clickstream data. Wherever the students clicking buttons using mouse or uh, your keypad uh, clicking buttons typing all the data just capture it. Then you come up with the features uh, which can be used from this data so that we can predict the students performance or predict which students going to drop out based you can predict whatever research question is. So, simply collect the learners interaction data uh, using clickstream data capture. This is a one type of uh, data format uh, which you use for um, uh, edX course, uh, but uh, the raw data will be different format. Okay. Look at this raw data, uh, this raw data says there is a username, uh, we hide the username and uh, it is a browser. The action name you know it is called seek video, you know I, I told you what is seek video. Seek video is uh, moving a video from one particular time to other time. So, what is the time? Uh, he was watching the video at uh, 1 minute, now we seek the video to third minute. So, the time he was watching and the new time also should be recorded, what is the old time and new time and the event type is seek video. So, this information can be captured from this log data, right. So, this is a general format for a uh, log data, uh, it is one type of format, uh, it is most usually used format. Let us see this data. Can you take a minute, uh, pause the video and identify, try to identify what is this log data means, what action a student is doing. So, here um, student uh, name is also hidden. Um, the, the action uh, even name is uh, test book PDF page scroll. So, the student is scrolling the PDF page, uh, which page there is a PDF called preamble IIT Bombay X PDF in the direction is upward scrolling in your mouse you can scrolling upward. So, actually is uh, watching the uh, reading the page. Based on the OS you use a uh, Mac OS or Windows OS you can say whether the student is watching um, uh, the reading the uh, a page in the next page as going back to the previous page. So, this information is can be captured from this log data. Okay. So, this is another type of clickstream data we are capturing like uh, it is not a clickstream even every action a student does like scrolling also in the page view. So, we call it as a trace data. So, there are two type of data clickstream and trace data. In general all the platforms which uh, allow a MOOC uh, will help you to collect this data. Unfortunately, NPTEL will not record all this user information because uh, the number of users in NPTEL is really huge and uh, we do not have a space to keep all the data in server, right. So, uh, we might be coming up with new projects to collect all the data. But uh, if you see the courses offered in edX or Coursera, they might record all this data. So, I was giving you the example that uh, we can collect all this information. From this information, I want you to create a uh, log features in a one specific format. The format is uh, um, so you collected raw data. So, you should convert the raw data into actions or events by writing some scripts like a python script or script. So, the raw data you saw in the previous slides should be used to convert this data into particular uh, actions or events. So, what is that actions or events? Similar to the log data we listed in the classroom environment, we also need to identify the features from this raw data. For example, you want to know number of pages viewed in last 10 minutes. How do you do that? You have to write a script from the log data that uh, data you captured to identify how many pages viewed uh, from the time uh, x minus 10 to x, all the page views should be uh, counted, that number should be listed, that is a feature. Why do you want to know number of pages? We do not know, that is a domain expertise that you have to come up with the which features will be useful to predict the students knowledge or students performance. For example, the average time the student spent on a page number 3. So, you have to capture whenever student is reading the page number 3 in all the sessions an average time has to be computed from that. 
or if a student is leading a page, uh, you might classify them as a read long or read short. Why? For example, I opened a page number 1, I spend only 1 second. Do you consider that as a read? May not be right. So, you might expect a student has to spend at least certain time say 5 seconds to read at least one line in that particular page. So, you can come up with the threshold to classify the read long and short. For example, uh, if the student is watching uh, less than say 5 seconds, you can classify it as a read short, right. If the student is watching, you, may, you know that the student will be uh, reading from 5 seconds in this particular page to say 1 minute, you can consider as a read. This is the actual read a student can do in this particular page. If it is greater than 1 minute, say 60 seconds, uh, this threshold is based on your knowledge on what is the content, whether the content has lot of pictures, some mathematical equation, it might take more than 10 minutes also. So, this is based on your knowledge is applied here. Then you might say it is read long, a student is reading this particular page for a long time and if a student on the page more than 5 minutes, for example, you can ignore that content, student might be probably open the video uh, particular page and he left. Uh, you move to other tab, he is doing some other activity, watching some other videos, he is coming back to read page. So, you should ignore it. Also, if the student is not even spending uh, less than say 2 seconds or something like that, you can't ignore it. So, if you have a time, timestamp information and you know what data student is watching, it will help you to capture this kind of information, read short, read long. Why this data is useful? Uh, you can say uh, there are some students who are not reading at all. Uh, they might be uh, uh, attempting the quiz or assignment question, they are not able to solve it. Though you know the reason because they do not read or uh, some students will be reading a lot of time, they will be reading, 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 they are not taking any assessment. Uh, you also can send a message saying that hey, why can't you go and take a quiz or uh, some students doing good, they read uh, long and they take assessment, they can pass the exam. So, you know what is the student's behavior from the long data. So, also you can come up with number of comments in a forum, it is information you can capture. So, there are a lot of data you can come up with. So, what is that, uh, how do you come up with these kind of features? That is called domain expertise. So, the feature construction is not just I can capture all the uh, raw file, I can use that raw file to predict something, no. Instead, it is about you apply your domain knowledge, your expertise, that is why you come up with the domain expertise in education or domain expert in teaching experiences apply that knowledge to come up with this list of features. To get these features from the raw file, you might need a uh, knowledge on writing a scripts like a python or R. That is what I said about you might need a um, small bit of programming knowledge, but for this course we will give you all the features extracted from the raw file. So, there is a tool which is used uh, very heavily in um, uh, industries uh, for a future is called feature tool. Please check that tool. Uh, this course is not uh, focused on uh, uh, explaining that tool because that tool is not uh, important to us because we extract the features based on our domain expertise. This feature tool will might help you to construct more features if you have the knowledge on domain. So, if you do not have any knowledge on domain, this feature tool also will not help you to create features. So, please check this um, tool called feature tool. Uh, this has been used uh, heavily in the industries nowadays. So, I mentioned that there should specific format your data should be stored. The format is timestamp, user ID, session ID, action name. What is action name? Action name may be uh, reading or uh, watching videos, uh, taking quiz, something like that. These are the action names. In each action, you might have a context. The context may be in a reading page, what page he is reading, what page number he is in. What type of video is watching? Is he in a video? Is he seeking the video, or is he playing the video in particular time uh, speed limit? All this information can be captured in uh, context of the actions. So the action name will come from your uh, domain. For example, if I use MOOC as a domain, uh, I know that there are four major actions in MOOC. That is video watching behavior. Uh, that is play, pause, uh, seek, uh, some kind of uh, behavior in the video watching interaction in the forum, in the forum commenting or uh, creating a thread or the actions. Also in the reading behavior, they might be reading some PDF or something like that. Also they might be navigating from one menu to other, one tab to other. 
So, these are the 4 major actions I might have or 4 or 5 actions. So, you need to come up with the actions and combine the time to create um, long or short actions or the actions can be repeated multiple times you might get a mult kind of suffix to it. Then you can have the context of the action where it is done it's like is he reading page number 3, is he reading uh, which video is watching, what is the speed that kind of information can be used to provide a meaningful data collection and that can be used to predict something. So, what you want to predict uh, that is your question, you want to predict the student's performance in the classroom, student's performance in the, um, in the particular course or who will drop out in next week something like that. So, also you have to learn about pre-processing uh, in other courses like machine learning or data mining courses this is your LXT um, your uh, external uh, course country you can go and watch. However, I recommend for educational video you do not need to do much uh, instead you need to understand if you are missing values how to replace the missing values. Some suggest missing values can be replaced with 0 or uh, missing values can be replaced with the mean of other values, but it depends on the data you are missing and also your domain knowledge. So, apply uh, logically what should be replaced that missing values and first try to understand why the values missed. Also, I recommend you to normalize uh, all the data to 0 to 1. For example, the performance score is measured in the scale of 0 to 100, but uh, number of upwards is measured in the scale of um, maybe 0, 10, 2, 3. How do you compare these two scales in a single uh, comparison? The machine learning algorithm might work if you do normalize it to 0 to 1. Some suggest to do standardization. Um, so, think about it normalization or standardization, then you apply based on your requirement. So, in this video, um, we talked about data collection in a classroom environment, also in a MOOC environment. I also talked about uh, how to extract features from the log file. Uh, we will discuss that in detail uh, what are the features, how to extract features, I will show examples in the next video. Thank you.